Right, Fellowship Day 168 and straight into today's theme, which is talking to the end users of what you think you're developing. As part of this fellowship, uh, I don't know if I've mentioned this much before, uh, there's, there's a lot of industry involvement. So nominally based in academia, we're trying to develop a certain technology for the chemical industries. And therefore, we've got five, uh, more than five now companies aligned with this research program because we found that each of those companies have a different itch to scratch that can be um, serviced by the technology that we are trying to develop here. But talking to those people in those companies who are the end users of what you think you're trying to develop can be as intimidating as it is exciting. And here's why. I've had several conversations of late where I have that rather, what I feel at this point is an automatic um, setting in my academic part of my brain to sell what we're developing as much as possible. Um, show how great it is, show how the idea um, has got wind in its sails and it's going to carry us to all sorts of impact. Balancing that with genuine, open conversations with end users and industrial partners is a great way to balance that part of the ego um, and and really genuinely test both what's new about your approach and what's useful. And I say that because uh, speaking to industrial partners, it becomes very clear very quickly that there's a lot of absolutely mind-blowing, blisteringly good science that often doesn't see the light of day quite rightly because they're working in um, a business-led environment they are scientists led in some way by the entrepreneurial spirit of being competitive in a landscape that demands it. But when you you can talk um, in a setting with such partners and it's, it's open, I, I feel so privileged to be able to do that. But when you do that, you start to tease out some of these ideas that um, you can't read in papers. It helps you hold up your own ideas and your own research program, your own apparently wonder technologies. Hold them up to the mirror and say, is this as good as I think it is? Has this all actually already been developed? Or has it been tried, tested, theorised inside a company and they found it was actually useless and what they already had was uh, more than serviceable for their needs. One or two conversations of late have, have really, in the first instance, knocked me for six thinking, oh my God, what ideas I'm bringing to the table here are useless. I'm not surprising anyone. I'm not delighting them. There's scepticism um, bordering on rejection. In some cases, uh, it makes me panic. It makes me think, do we really need to go back to the drawing board here? But the reality is it's not quite as um, anxiety-inducing as that. It's not quite as disastrous. There's a lot of melodrama in what I've just said. What is true, though, is that these conversations, as difficult as they are, can refine your idea, refine the research approach towards something that is a genuine step change in practice and not just something that you're trying to push on someone. One of um, one of the mentors that I hold dear Dr. Fraser Kerr, um, who's helping me out on the commercial side of my fellowship, um, he puts this brilliantly and it's something that sticks with me is that, you know, through such conversations, it's not just refining your idea, but you're also looking for the pull rather than the push. And by that, I mean, it's through these conversations with your end users, you start to really see who wants to pull 
the usable version of your idea towards them. And that's what you're wanting more so than the push, which is you finding that you're constantly having to push the idea to sell it and oversell it and it's not quite landing. So through all of these conversations, you, you really start to define where the pool is and that helps you then prioritize which areas um, you can develop first um, and who's going to take fundamental research into real world practice more in the most streamlined and quickest fashion. So there's a, a lot in that, but I'm trying to summarize a little bit. Consider where you've got a technology that you think will be applied. If you're developing something in your program that you're looking to get out of the bubble of the research lab and whatever environment that may be, and looking to get it into the hands of end users, talk to the end users. Do not develop things in isolation. Talk to them because you'll sound out your ideas. You'll be able to test your assumptions. You might be able to find ways to get something in to the environment in which you think it can be applied. You can find out what's currently done, what the pain points are, what, if anything, the value add would be of having your new technology. Um, and, and using the word new, find out what is genuinely new. Um, seek those hidden ideas, those ideas that um, are not incentivized by open science or publication, but those ideas that fuel the competition of industry and business. Seek those out too to really test and refine and sharpen what you think is a good idea that will be translated from fundamental research into practice. And in closing, I think about the um, what's commonly referred to as the Heilmeyer Catechism. Let me say that again. The Heilmeyer Catechism, um, named after George H. Heilmeyer, a former DARPA director, um, famed for his engineering and materials work that led to the development of LCD displays. He's got a list of questions that he poses to everyone who's thinking about starting a project. And I won't go through them exhaustively here, but among those questions, very much in relation to what I've just been talking about, is asking a question like, what is it that you're trying to do? And can you articulate that without any jargon? And then very much in relation to speaking to industry partners or end users, you need to think about the question, how is the job currently done today? Right? And what are the limits of that current practice? Not what could be done, what is done, what's been done right now, how are things done, what's the tradition, what's the established methods? And as established as they are, is there any pain points in them? Is there any limits to that? And then finally for now, what is new in your approach and why do you think it will be successful? So again, in those conversations that might be difficult, you can find and refine what is genuinely new about your approach and filter out all the assumptions that you've had in mind that aren't actually novel. And through all of that, these conversations will show you who really cares, where is the pull, rather than the push. So consider where you might avoid developing your ideas in isolation. How can you test what's fresh, novel, and exciting to those that you think you're trying to serve? Have a great day. We'll see you for day 169. If you like what you're hearing on the podcast head over to the website where not only will you find the written blog versions of these podcasts you'll find my leadership blog series the daily thought series and information about my book on managing the imposter phenomenon we also have even more free resources and webinars linked to the youtube channel so head on over to dr-mark-read.com that's D R
dash mark with a C dash R E I D dot com. Thanks again for listening. <laughs>